concentrate, like we practiced. Now, fire! I'm taking these apprentices to Redcliffe. The first enchanter says you need every able-bodied mage for the war. They're young, but capable enough, as you saw. Discipline and focus. Master says Discipline and focus. Master says you will help in the battles to come. I'll get on it. doing in Haven? There's nothing for you here. What do you want? Ask and be on your way. Haven's always been here. My family knows no other home. Father Eirik is our spiritual leader and guide. Revered father? I've never heard of this. It's always been thus in Haven. We do not question tradition. Our ways are not the ways of the lowland cities. The urn is nothing but a legend. I do not know who Brother Jenna TV is or what he says. However, I'm sure people can convince themselves of anything. No. We do not appreciate lowlanders looking about our home as though it were some sort of zoo. Who? Perhaps revered Father Eirik will know of whom you speak. Unfortunately, he's ministering to the villagers at the moment and cannot be disturbed. I suggest you seek your brother elsewhere. It's always been thus in Haven. We do not question tradition. Ask and be on your way. We keep to ourselves. We see no need to announce our presence to the world. It's more peaceful that way. Then perhaps you should return to the lowlands. You may trade for supplies at the shop if you wish. Then I suggest you and your companions leave. They are hiding something. Tis obvious, is it not? Interesting strategy. Tell me, do you intend to keep going north until it becomes south and attack the Archdemon from the rear? Truly, it would surprise me if my enemy counterattacked by running away and climbing a mountain. How will this help him? I have no doubt of your faith. I am beginning to doubt your sanity, however. The Archdemon is our goal, and we are heading away from it to find the charred remnants of a dead woman. You haven't thought this through. It is not an issue of trust, Kadan. I trust you with my life, but this is not my life at risk. It is our goal. I have spoken my mind. Let us waste no more time here. Hey. Allow me. I could do that for you. I was not expecting to find something so unsettling. That is human blood. I just do. I also know that no one can lose that much blood and live.
come, Bonnie Lynn. Tell us, tell us where you've been. Were you up, were you down? Chasing rabbits round the town. Come, come, Bonnie Lynn. Tell us, tell us where you've been. Come, come, Bonnie Lynn. We've a bed to put you in. It is soft, it is warm. It will shelter from the storm. Come, come, Bonnie Lynn. We've a bed to put you in. Dear, dear Bonnie Lynn, sleeps the peaceful crib within. A mossy stone, a finger bone. No one knows but Lynn alone. Dear, dear Bonnie Lynn, sleeps the peaceful crib within. Who are you? You shouldn't be here. I asked you first. No, and I don't care neither. Lowlanders don't belong here. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Haven is Haven. But I have a secret. Do you want to see? Don't know. It's lucky. I keep it with me. Don't tell anyone, all right? So, are you going to continue staring at me as if I am covered in eels? Eels would be something. Prudery. How charming. I expected paranoia. This is much better. I prefer to be stared at lustfully, if at all. What can I do? Keep trying, then. Oh? Then shall I demonstrate an act or two, and you may tell me hot or cold? I'll save time. Cold. <laughs> you are a tease. Stranger. At your service. I'll get on it. You're not from Haven. We... we don't get very many visitors. How would you describe the place you know only as home? No, I've never heard that name. I don't have much, but I suppose you can take a look. I'm here. What are you doing? That's private! No! No! 
You, you have no right! You need something? What can I do? Now is better than later. like they are singing the chant in there. Maybe we should have a look. We are blessed beyond measure. We are chosen by the Holy and beloved to be her guardians. This sacred duty is given to us alone. Rejoice, my brethren and prepare your hearts to receive her. Lift up your voices and despair not, for she will raise her faithful servants to glory when her... Ah, welcome. I heard we had a visitor wandering about the village. I trust you've enjoyed your time in Haven so far? This, my brothers, is what happens when you let an outsider into the village. They have no respect for our privacy. He will tell others of us if we let him. Word will spread, and then what? You, stranger, do not understand our ways. You would bring war to Haven in your ignorance. We've learned not to trust outsiders. What trust can there be when you barge into our homes with no regard for those that live there? We don't owe you any explanations for our actions. We have a sacred duty. Failure to protect her would be a greater sin. All will be forgiven. <laughs> Finish it. Yo, you're, you're not one of them, thank the Maker. What do you think? Weeks of scant food and water, the torture. Oh, I've never felt better. <sighs> the 
The leg's not doing so well, and I can't feel my foot. <coughs> Thank you. That... that feels much better. I don't have time to rest now. I'm so close. The urn is just up that mountain. The Arl is sick. Will he live? Politics never did anyone any good. The Arl is a noble soul. But the ashes... the ashes will surely cure him. Haven lies in the shadow of the mountain that holds the urn. There is an old temple there built to protect it. The door is always locked, but I know what the key is. Irik wears a medallion that opens the temple door. I've seen what he does with it. Yes, that is your key. Take me to the mountainside and I will show you. It is not that far, and will you let me lean on you? For the urn, any pain is worth enduring. Ah, oh, good. Help me up here. I'll try not to slow us down. Here we are. Give me the medallion, and let's see if I remember. Yes, yes, you see, it, it can be manipulated just like this. And there, a key to open the way. There are very few keys like this left in the world, but I have seen some. When you find the right combination, it just feels right. It is hard to explain. Now, let's see if we can open this door. There should be a place to insert this. seen this hall in all its splendor, as it was meant to be. Still, sweep away the ice and the snow, and traces of beauty remain. I'm sorry, what? Uh, I was a little distracted, I apologize. These carvings were created just after Andraste's death, and they may reveal things about her life that we do not yet know. I think I need more time to study these statues and carvings. I could not keep up with you with my injuries. I should be safe. I don't think there are any villagers here. Go. I will be all right. Perhaps my destiny was only to lead you to the Ann. It was designed to protect the Ann from those who would steal it or do harm to it. Namely, the Tevinter Imperium. I'm not sure. The legends were never very specific on that point. Only the faithful shall lay eyes on the sacred ashes. Death and misfortune await the unbeliever. The Maker's gaze has fallen on Andraste's final resting place. He weeps for his beloved, and his wrath at her betrayers endures. That is what the legend says, and the Maker may indeed watch this place. Read between the lines, however, and you'll understand that it is merely a simple truth draped in hyperbole and metaphor. After all, no one wants to hear Willie toiled for many a year to perfect the curious mechanisms that would send a sharpened spike up the arse of the unwary intruder. I think my decision to stay here was the best one, don't you? I'll be right here if you need me. Now I need something to write on.
more books. We should burn a few to warm ourselves up, I should Can think. I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? a ladder so you can get off my back. Got it. Can I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? I'll get on it.
right, all right. I'll get on it. Awaiting orders. you a ladder so you can get off my back now is better than later all right all right good to go Come <laughs> on. 
right ahead. You should 
Here.
Can I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? Get on it. Got it. All right, all right.
Stop! You will go no further! You have defiled our temple. You have spilled the blood of the faithful and slaughtered our young. No more! You will tell me now, intruder, why you have done all this. Why have you come here? I am Father Colgrim, leader and guide to the disciples of Andraste. Kill us, and you will face Andraste. She will smell our blood, and the blood of her children on you, and her wrath will be great. She is so much more! She is even more glorious than all the old gods combined! The prophet Andraste has overcome death itself, and has returned to her faithful in a form more radiant than you can imagine. Not even the Tevinter Imperium could hope to slay her now. What hope do you have? They are still within this temple, but why do we need ashes when we serve the risen Andraste in all her glory? So you are after the ashes. Perhaps there is a way for you to make up for your desecration of our home and temple. It may be because I believe in second chances. All of us stumble through the darkness before being found and shown the light. Perhaps through Andraste's mercy, her greatest enemy will become her greatest champion. You know nothing! Andraste revealed herself to us! We are her chosen! To arms, my brethren! Andraste will grant us victory! Now is better than later. going to test that theory.
now is better than later. This is not like the rest of the temple. This part is unblemished, untouched. I bid you welcome, Pilgrim. I am the Guardian, the protector of the urn of sacred ashes. I have waited years for this. It has been my duty, my life, to protect the urn and prepare the way for the faithful who come to revere Andraste. For years beyond counting have I been here, and shall I remain until my task is done and the Imperium has crumbled into the sea. I do not know, and I do not question. When my brethren and I carried Andraste from Tevinter to this sanctuary, we vowed to forever revere her memory and guard her. I have watched generations of my brethren take up the mantle of their fathers. For centuries they did this, unwavering, joyful in their appointed task. But now they have lost their way. They have forgotten Andraste. And their promise. I am all that remains of the first disciples. I swore I would protect the urn as long as I lived. And I have lived a very long time. Did anyone really know her, save the Maker? She would sometimes spend weeks alone in meditation. Often without food or water. I cannot express in words my love for Andraste. You must seek her out for yourself. Everyone must. I am the Guardian. I am my duty. Is this magic, or is it faith? Learn not to judge so quickly, young one. You already know that the urn contains the remains of the Prophet Andraste. What else is there to tell? No. Our Andraste has gone to the Maker's side. She will not return. The dragon is a fearsome creature, and they must have seen her as an alternative to the absent Maker and his silent Andraste. A true believer would not require audacious displays of power. It began with an ancestor of the one known as Colgrim. He saw himself as a new prophet, preaching the rebirth. Some disagreed with him. I heard their cries of pain and loss, which were quickly silenced. The Maker will sit in judgment of them when the time comes. You have come to honor Andraste, and you shall, if you prove yourself worthy. It is not my place to decide your worthiness. The Gauntlet does that. If you are found worthy, you will see the urn and be allowed to take a small pinch of the ashes for yourself. If not, the Gauntlet tells the true pilgrims from the false. You will undergo four tests of faith. And we shall see how your soul fares. You will understand what it is when you face it. Before you go, 
is something I must ask. I see that the path that led you here was not easy. There is suffering in your past. Your suffering, and the suffering of others. You abandoned your father and mother, leaving them in the hands of Rendon Howe, knowing he would show no mercy. Do you think you failed your parents? Your path is laid out before me and plain to see. In the lines of your face, and the scars on your heart. Do you believe you failed your parents? Then you do not dwell on past mistakes. Neither yours, nor someone else's. One wonders what this Guardian's purpose is. Be wary of his traps. What's past is past. Why bring it up and open all wounds? Parshera, leave the past where it falls. And what of those that follow you? And you? Why do you say the Maker speaks to you? When all know that the Maker has left, he spoke only to Andraste. Do you believe yourself her equal? I never said that. I... In Orle, you were someone. In Lothering, you feared you would lose yourself, become a drab sister, and disappear. When your brothers and sisters of the Cloister criticized you for what you professed, you were hurt, but you also reveled in it. It made you special. You enjoyed the attention, even if it was negative. You're saying that I made it up for... for the attention? I did not. I know what I believe. Demand whatever answers you want, spirit. You came to this land as an observer. But you killed a family in a blind rage. Have you failed your people by allowing a Quinari to be seen in that light? I have never denied that I failed. And you, Morrigan, Flemeth's daughter, what? Be gone, spirit. I will not play your games. I will respect your wishes. The way is open. Good luck, and may you find what you seek. Lark could carry it, while a strong man might not. Of what do I speak? Yes, I was Andraste's dearest friend in childhood, and always we would sing. She celebrated the beauty of life, and all who heard her would be filled with joy. They say the Maker himself was moved by Andraste's song, and then she sang no more of simple things. Echoes from a shadow realm, whispers of things yet to come. Thought strange sister dwells in night, is swept away by dawning light. Of what do I speak? A dream came upon me as my daughter slumbered beneath my heart. It told of her life, and of her betrayal and death. I am sorrow and regret. I am a mother weeping bitter tears for a daughter she could not save. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The debt of blood must be paid in full. Of what do I speak? Yes, my husband Hesarian would have chosen a quick death for Andraste. I made him swear that she would die publicly with her war leaders. That all would know the Imperium's strength. I am justice. I am vengeance. Blood can only be repaid in blood. I'd neither a guest nor a trespasser be. In this place I belong, that belongs also to me. Of what do I speak? It was my dream for the people to have a home of their own, where we would have no masters but ourselves. 
The enemy of my enemy is my friend, and thus we followed Andraste against the Imperium. But she was betrayed, and so were we. The bones of the world stretched towards the sky's embrace, veiled in white, like a bride greeting her groom. Of what do I speak? Yes. I carried Andraste's ashes out of Tevinter into the mountains to the east, where she could gaze ever into her maker's sky. No more fitting a tomb than this could we find. A poison of the soul, passion's cruel counterpart. From love she grows, till love lies slain. Of what do I speak? Yes, jealousy drove me to betrayal. I was the greatest general of the Alamori, but beside her I was nothing. Hundreds fell before her on bended knee. They loved her, as did the Maker. I loved her too, but what man can compare with a god? No man has seen it, but all men know it. Lighter than air, sharper than any sword. Comes from nothing, but will fell the strongest armies. Of what do I speak? Yes, hunger was the weapon used against the wicked men of the Teventer Imperium. The Maker kindled the sun's flame, scorching the land. Their crops failed and their armies could not march. Then he opened the heavens and bade the waters flow, and washed away their filth. I am Kefer, disciple of Andraste and commander of her armies. I saw these things done and knew the Makers smiled on us. She wields the broken sword and separates true kings from tyrants. Of what do I speak? Yes, I could not bear the sight of Andraste's suffering, and mercy bade me end her life. I am the penitent sinner, who shows compassion as he hopes compassion will be shown to him. My dearest child, you know that I am gone, and all your prayers and wishes will not bring me back. Up. I know you miss me, and my death and my life no longer have a hold on you. This is how it should be. Set your eyes on the horizon. Do not look back, and do not falter. You have such a long road ahead of you, and you must be prepared. And so I leave this in your hands. I know you will do great things with it. Foolish creature, you should know better than your the cruelty on my... on her face? Is that really what I am? This proves nothing. I have nothing to fear from shadows. <laughs> this looks fun. Abbott will have to work together and join hands and sing a happy song to get across. I suspect we'll have to work together to get across. It is. Try something else. As you wish. Here I am. We 
have to take them one at a time. Hey. Consider it done. through the trials of the gauntlet. You have walked the path of Andraste, and like her, you have been cleansed. You have proven yourself worthy, Pilgrim. Approach the sacred ashes. dreamed I would ever lay my eyes on the urn of sacred ashes. I... I, I... I have no words to express. I stand in awe. Really. Congratulations. You found a waste bin. Welcome back. You were gone for quite some time. Well, did you find it? Is that? There's some dust on... No, that's not dust. Omega, I'm not worthy to look upon. What... what was it like, coming to the urn, I mean? Tests? Interesting. Very interesting. Perhaps my research will not seem so much like blasphemy to the Chantry now. 
We must organize an expedition. There is so much history here, it must be studied. And, and pilgrims should be allowed to come to the Anne. And eventually, it shall be exploited by the rich and the powerful, as these things usually are. I must return home. I have much to do. If you ever find yourself in Denerim, please visit me. I am not a rich man, but I have a small collection of interesting artifacts, and I do owe you a reward for coming to my rescue. I hope to see you soon, my friend. I'll get on it. I think I owe you an explanation for what happened earlier. You should know that something happened to me at the tower before you came along. You spoke to Petra, did you not? She told you I saved her from a demon. I did, but I did not survive that encounter. Let me explain fully. I engaged a very powerful demon to rescue Petra. It sapped me of all my energy and will and left me drained. It took everything I had to defeat it. And when I was done, I no longer had the strength to keep my heart beating. I remember my life ebbing away. Everything receded from me. Sound, light. I remember being enveloped in complete, impenetrable darkness. And then I sensed a presence enfolding me and cradling me whispering quietly to me. The sensation is impossible to describe. I was being held back firmly, but gently, as a mother would a child eager to slip from her grasp. I felt life and warmth flowing through my veins again. I began to be aware of small sounds and the discomfort of my hip pressing into the cold stone of the tower floor. The Fade contains spirits both benevolent and malicious. The benevolent spirits seldom make themselves known, because they want nothing from mortals, unlike the demons. It was one of these spirits that saved me. Without it, I would be dead. And it has not left me. It is with me, even now, bonded to me. You see, I am supposed to be dead. It is the spirit that is keeping me in this world. And this is not the way of things. Perhaps the spirit did not expect this, but it is weakening gradually. I am living on borrowed time. I do not know. I can feel when the spirit weakens, so I should have fair warning. But come, let us not talk about this. There is time yet. What's on your mind? I have always had an affinity for the spirits of the Fade. As a child, I never feared my dreams, because I knew they were there. I could sense the demons, too, and their presence frightened me. It was the kindly spirits of the Fade that took the fear from me. I've always been able to feel the spirits, even if I never saw them. And as I nurtured my talent in the circle, I became more sensitive. I began to notice every time I was in the Fade, whether it was in a dream or in magical practice, that I was being watched. It did not feel evil. I never feared it. In fact, it infused me with soft, strange warmth I never felt before. Sometimes I would see it, a glowing, nebulous form. Most times I would just feel its presence, gentle and comforting but somehow alien. I think it is a spirit of faith. They have never been seen before, and perhaps I am wrong. But something tells me I'm not. It always felt like the same entity. This one spirit was curious about me, and was guarding me, for want of a better word. There were times when I was in the Fade, that it seemed to stretch forth to shield me, keeping me safe. And I think it gave me strength in my most terrible battles, Ostagar being one of them. I don't know why I was chosen. 
Perhaps it knew that there was something more that lay in store for me. I like to think that I was given a rare chance. And I'm going to make the best of the time so generously given to me. I will not lie motionless in a bed with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. That is not the death for me. And so I will fight alongside the Grey Warden and help prepare him for the task that is yet before him. So you had better listen to me, because I swear, if I should fall before the end and you don't seem to be doing things properly, I'll get up again to give you a good finger-wagging. You know, I think you'll be all right, even without my help. All right, all right! Such a force has not been seen since... Well, aren't you sweet and attentive? Of course. Wait, you want to talk uh, about it? Really? Well, aren't you sweet and attentive? I thought you'd never ask. Return. Might you have news? Unchanged, I'm afraid. We've tried more magical healing, but nothing works. As time passes, I become more and more convinced the urn might be our only hope. You have? Wonderful. Let us go at once to Eamon's side and see if the urn's healing powers live up to their reputation. You have been deathly ill for a very long time. Do you remember nothing? Tegan? What are you doing here? Where is Isolde? I am here, my husband. I'm Connor. Where is my boy? Where is our son? He lives. Though many others are dead. There is much to tell you, husband. Dead? Then... It was not a dream. Much has happened since you fell ill, brother. Some of it will not be... Easy for you to hear. Then tell me. I wish to hear all of it.
This is most troubling. There is much to be done, that is true. But I should first be thankful to those who have done so much. Grey Warden, you have not only saved my life, but kept my family safe as well. I am in your debt. Will you permit me to offer you a reward for your service? I understand, but regardless of your motivations, I feel you are worthy of a reward. I would like to honor your efforts, nothing more. Then allow me to declare you and those traveling with you champions of Redcliffe. You will always be a welcome guest within these halls. And for you, Warden, a shield of the same make as those that have been given to our finest knights. We should speak of Loghain, brother. There is no telling what he will do once he learns of your recovery. Loghain instigates a civil war even though the Darkspawn are on our very doorstep. Long I have known him, he is a sensible man, one who never desired power. I was there when he announced he was taking control of the throne, Eamon. He is mad with ambition, I tell you. Mad indeed. Mad enough to kill Caelan to attempt to kill myself and destroy my lands. Whatever happened to him, Loghain must be stopped. What's more, we can scarce afford to fight this war to its bitter end. I could unite those opposing Loghain, yes, but not all oppose him. He has some very powerful allies. We have no time to wage a campaign against him. Someone must surrender if Ferelden is to have any chance at fighting the Darkspawn. I will spread word of Loghain's treachery, both here and against the King. But it will be but a claim made without proof. Those claims will give Loghain's allies pause. But we must combine it with a challenge Loghain cannot ignore. We need someone with a stronger claim to the throne than Loghain's daughter, the Queen. Are you referring to Alistair, brother? Are you certain? I would not propose such a thing if we had an alternative. But the unthinkable has occurred. Tegan and I have a claim through marriage, but we would seem opportunists no better than Loghain. Alistair's claim is by blood. And what about me? Does anyone care what I want? You have a responsibility, Alistair. Without you, Loghain wins. I would have to support him for the sake of Ferelden. Is that what you want? I... B but I... No, my lord. I see only one way to proceed. I will call for a landsmeet, a gathering of all of Ferelden's nobility in the city of Denaran. There, Ferelden can decide who shall rule, one way or another. Then the business of fighting our true foe can begin. What say you to that, my friend? I do not wish to proceed without your blessing. Why do you think he had me poisoned? He wanted me gone without having to confront me directly. If I call for a landsmeet, refusing the compromise and attacking Redcliffe will only support our accusations. I'm sure he'd rather I died from the poison. Had the demon not interfered, that's exactly what would have happened. That depends. If we cannot get a consensus in the landsmeet for Alistair, we cannot afford to oppose Loghain either. Does that mean Loghain could win? A man who killed his own king, who has gone mad with power? Perhaps. We must see that he does not. Ferelden must stand united to defeat the Darkspawn. A fractured nation will not defeat the Blight, even given my army and those gathered with your treaties. I'm not sure that would help our cause. We would become the criminals, and our accusations would become excuses. Furthermore, I'm not even certain where Loghain might be. Unless we convince some of Loghain's allies to abandon him, that's not likely to happen. Our army is not large enough. As a Grey Warden, you may gather allies to you, but we need those forces to face the Darkspawn, not to battle against our own. Very well. I will send out the word. But before we proceed, I believe there is the matter of the mage, my son's tutor. He still lives, I understand. He does. He is in the dungeon, brother. Have him brought here, Tegan. I wish to see him. Jowan, 
What you have done is not in question. You tried to assassinate me and set into motion a series of events that nearly destroyed everything I cherish. What have you to say in your own defense? Nothing, my lord. Other than to say I am sorry. I expect no mercy for what I have done. I see. Grey Warden, have you anything to say on Jowan's behalf? Oh? That is... unexpected. And what would you have me do? As the injured party, my ability to see the merciful path is... strained. True enough, and wisely said. Jowan, I hereby turn you over to the Tower of the Circle of Magi. May the Maker have mercy on your soul. Thank you, my lord. Now, back to the matter of the Landsmeet. It will take some time to recall my forces and organize our allies. I would prefer to wait until that is done before calling the Landsmeet. In the meantime, I suggest you pursue the remainder of the Grey Warden treaties. We will need all the allies we can get if we are to defeat the Darkspawn Horde. <laughs> Right. I could do that for you. Can I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? Now that the Arl's awake, he's going to do... Things. It is an honor to meet you. Many of the Arl's knights are still in search for the urn of sacred air. The knights of Redcliffe will never... Good day, my lord. We all have to fight to join signed on for the black Hellbreak. There's nowhere else for me to go since my cottage burned right down. Ask away. Of course. You never ask? We are friends. I didn't mean to... It wasn't supposed to... Oh, let me explain. The thing is, I'm used to not telling anyone who didn't already know. It was always a secret. Even Duncan was the only Grey Warden you knew. And then, after the battle, when I should have told you... I don't know. It seemed like it was too late by then. But how do you just tell someone that? Yes, well, I suppose part of me kind of liked you not knowing. It's just that anyone who's ever found out has treated me differently afterwards. 
I was the bastard prince instead of just being Alistair. I know that must sound stupid to you, but I hate that it shaped my entire life. I never wanted it, and I certainly don't want to be king. The very idea of it terrifies me. Hello? Have you met me? I... I'm no leader of men. I don't want to be the person sitting on the throne and making decisions that affect the lives of others. That it, it just isn't me. And now Arleman plans to put me forward as the heir. It never ends, does it? And for what it's worth, I'm sorry for not telling you sooner. It was a dumb thing to do. I guess it's kind of a relief that you know now. Let's go. Ask away. Of course. Such as they are. That's a good question. There's plenty in Orle, but who knows where they might be found. And the nearest Orlesian city is weeks away. If we go north and cross the sea, there's bound to be some in the free marches. Again, however, I just don't know where. I don't know anything about Grey Wardens in other lands. Here in Ferelden, there's our compound in Denerim at the palace, but that's it. Loghain will have control over that and be watching it, no doubt. Beyond that, the only place I know of is Weishaupt Fortress. That's the headquarters of all Grey Wardens in the Anderfels, a thousand miles from here. But I've no idea how to even contact them. So unless we try to get back to the compound in Denerim, I suppose the answer is no. There's nowhere for us to go. I imagine that eventually the Grey Wardens outside of Ferelden will wonder what's happened. Why there's no contact of Duncan or someone. They'll send someone eventually. Though who knows what Loghain's people in Denerim will tell them. Maybe they won't send anyone. We could try to contact them. But that would mean leaving Ferelden, and even if we did, they couldn't come back with us in time to stop the blight. So that means whatever happens, it's up to us. I mean, eventually we would have to use the joining to make more Grey Wardens, right? But I don't know how to do the joining, or what's involved. I know it involves lyrium and some other magic, and that it's really difficult to prepare, but that's it. Unless we can find out more about the joining, I guess we better get used to the idea that there might only be two of us for now. Until more come from elsewhere. Just left? You mean, just left for Elven? I don't know. If there's an archdemon, however, we're supposed to be the only ones who can defeat it. And that means the blight would grow unchecked. Eventually, other Grey Wardens in Orlais and other lands would hear about it, and they would come to fight it, but they wouldn't come in time to save Ferelden. There's no way. I'm not going anywhere. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. <laughs>